Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special PAM Town Hall Forum, Creativity in Times of Corona, featuring guest panelist Tim Waugh. This town hall is brought to you by Jeffers Handbill Supply. Visit their website, handbillworld.com, for all your handbill needs and resources, and by the Presbyterian Association of Musicians. We are excited about our online worship and music conference this year, and we hope you will register and join us from every time and place. Learn more at presbymusic.org slash 2020 conference. There will be a question and answer period during this presentation. You may submit your questions through the question box in your window, or you may click raise your hand and speak directly to our presenter. We also have handouts available in the handouts tab in your window, so you may follow along with today's presentation. You can also download these handouts for use afterward. As a reminder, a recording of this town hall will be made available starting tomorrow. And now, without further ado, please welcome our presenter, Tim Waugh. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to have you with us this afternoon. Welcome to my um, isolation area in West Virginia. Let me first of all tell you that um, the at the bottom of the four handouts, you may want to open that one up already because that's a handout actually an outline of exactly what we're going to be doing. So you may want to take a look at those things as we're going. So as your questions come in, um, I will be glad to answer them as they go. Now, as we're starting, we are living in a very interesting time of music making. I've often thought that we might want to um, think of this time not so much as what can't we do, but what can we do? So what you have in your uh, handout is basically a set of little lesson plans that are pretty much pick up and go right away, and you can take them with you and use them as you'd like. Um, they are sequential. I'm a sequential teacher. So I start with the basic fundamental things that we need. And these are things that you may be able to use for anyone, not only your handbell groups. We will get into handbell groups uh, later on, so hang with me on that part. But as we go, we're going to start with, first of all, rhythmic engagement. And if you're doing any virtual gatherings or anything like that, one of the fun things that we can do is to clap. Now, if you've ever been with me before, you know that nobody sits there and takes notes. Everybody participates, and that will include you. So get your hands ready because we're going to be doing some clapping things. Um, and since you're all muted, we don't have to worry about getting things synced up. So just clap right along as you hear and as you feel led. Uh, first of all, I like to work with kids and kids of all ages with echo clapping. So I'm gonna echo clap some things to you. First of all, I'm gonna clap four beats and then you echo them with me. Are you ready? Here we go. And this works well no matter where you are, even if we're starting to get people back together in church, a good way to warm up your congregation, especially when we're sort of discouraging singing. Now, here's where it gets fun. I'm gonna clap, but as I clap, I'm going to add a new clapping rhythm. Now you are clapping, right? I'm, I'm watching. Yes, you, you need to clap along. I'm gonna add a rhythm while you were clapping the old rhythm. See if you can keep up with me. Here we go. How did you do? 
That is challenging for adults and kids all alike. So in those things, those are ways that we can keep our handball choirs, our vocal choirs, our children's choirs alive and rhythmic all the way through. And we can do that right online like we are now, or you can do it in person in smaller groups that are spread out. Um, now, the next part of adding to that rhythm experience is looking for found instruments in your house. We have, and I think I was certainly one of the ones guilty as a child of emptying mom's drawers and kitchen cabinets and everything like that to find things that made sounds. In your handout, I have very, for a long time divided those sounds into four families. There are four families of untuned sounds, and they are click tap, shake scrape, ring gong, and boom bang. Click tap instruments that you could find in your kitchen, just about anything with a wooden handle, any wooden spoons or things of that nature. Shake scrape, that's easy. A grater works well for that. Ring gong instruments, of course, you know, pan lids, even the glass ones, if you're careful, make a good ringing sound and boom, bang is easy. That's pots and pans. Um, so as you find those instruments, these are instruments that families at home, and again, I'm going to say, we are in a time of ministry of working with people in their homes. And so I think it's a great time to encourage family interaction with music and worship and allowing people in their homes as they're comfortable to engage with you on the screen from your worship experiences that you're producing. Once again, click tap, shake scrape, ring gong, boom bang. It's in your handout. Now, we're going to use that, and Andrew's going to put up a, a visual called the African Rhythm Complex. And you'll see that on your screen here in a minute. In addition to that, it is in your handout. Um, so if you're looking at that now, I'm just double checking. Yep, it's up. Um, you notice that there's a line, and in African music, a lot of it is based around 12 beats, so that we're looking straight across there, 12 beats. You'll notice that I've taken my handy red crayon, and I've circled beats one, beats four, beat seven, and beat 10 in the first line. So I encourage you, you may not have a found instrument at this point, or you may not have a homemade instrument at this point, but I encourage you to clap along with this. Let's do row A right now, here we go. And we're gonna clap right along with it. Uh, and ready, here we go. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's do that again. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Great. Look at row B. It's a little different. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And twelve is supposed to be circled there. Here we go. Let's try once again. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Look at row C. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, some interesting little rhythms through there. Let's just for the fun of it go ahead and do row D. Here we go and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All the way down, you see several rows there all the way down to G and H, and G and H are left blank so that as you reproduce this, you're welcome um, to add your own at the bottom. And you notice I've been doing this for a while. It's been around for a while for me. So what do we do with this? We've got this African rhythm con complex and we're clapping along or playing along. Um, well, it can actually be fit into singing as we go in worship. Now, you may have a soloist or a single person singing. And by the way, I wanna mention um, elementary music teachers, which I was one for many years, um, you don't have an awful lot, so you, you become inventive. 
And so we actually discovered when I was teaching elementary school that there are three different sounds, three different families, if you will, of clapping. Uh, first of all, soprano hand claps. It's fingers of the hand on the palm of the other, which makes a high sound. Alto hand clap, which is palms together. And bass hand clap, which is cupped palms. And you can hear the difference a little bit, I think, with me. You certainly can do it with you. Um, so you can practice. Well, let's do it. Let's do it for just a bit. Would you select a row, A, B, C, D, E, F, or fill in one of your own at G and H, and I'm going to clap row A, and let's see what happens. You can imagine if you had a whole room of people doing this, or a whole group of people, what it might sound like. Here we go. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Good job. Now, that can be added with singing. Let's say that we have a soloist or a cantor in church. I know we're supposed to be cautious and careful about singing, but who says our congregation can't clap? Or who says our congregations as we gather can't play an instrument? I've got handy drums right here as you can see so you can use homemade instruments found instruments in the kitchen or some prepared instruments and it's best that they bring them from home that way you don't have to worry about sterilization or cleanup or anything like that i'm going to sing i've got peace like a river and i'd like for you to clap along with one of your lines if you get bored of the line would you go to another line? So here we go. I'm going to start us out with my row A. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. There you go. I think that there are lots of things that we could do in worship and making plans around that type of an experience for our congregations, for our musical ensembles. Now, for those of you who are going, wait a minute, he hasn't said anything about handbells yet. I haven't, heard, and I'm here for handbells. There is no reason that on that African rhythm complex, you couldn't hand out a pentatonic set of handbells. Let's say uh, F, G, A, C, D to your congregation. They can write, ring with those circled numbers right on their beat and play right along with it. As a matter of fact, that would be a really cool thing to do. And short notice, I know, but this coming Sunday is Pentecost. Having a wash of sound if you are meeting as a congregation or in parking lots or in open areas, that would be great. There's some other ideas in that, but those circle ideas can transfer right back into a handbell experience or an instrument, either tuned instrument or an untuned ex in instrument experience. So both of those would work. Thank you for the African Rhythm Complex. We're gonna go on to another um, experience that I, and we're gonna expand on this, the same concepts of the same rhythms and music, but using children's stories. Again, using click, tap, shake, scrape, ring, gong, boom, bang, easy for me to say, sounds all the way through is a, is a good experience and children's stories are great. I've listed some ideas that I've used before. 
I have one handy here that I've used before. It's called Dancing Drum. I know maybe backwards there. Dancing Drum, a Cherokee legend. It's a that would be something good for one of our Sundays that celebrates World uh, World Communion, uh, World Music Sundays. Um, but you can use sounds to accompany those types of things. Now, one that we're all familiar with is uh, an wonderful old book that we have um, used. As a matter of fact, we've probably done it um, a lot with children or a lot with other groups uh, in camping situations. I think I first did this at a um, church camp. So if you will follow along with me, we're going on a bear hunt just for a few minutes. All right. So if you'll do clap, pat, clap, pat, clap, we're going on a bear hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh uh. Grass. Long wavy grass. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no. We've got to go through it. Now the instruments. Swishy, 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 swish. You get the idea there. Why? do we have to have all the fun at church camps and never do the same thing for Bible stories? How many of our Bible stories could be actually moved into a children's experience? And we know from experience, if you do a children's sermon with the children, the adults get just as much out of it as the kids do. So I think it's a great idea to look for stories and for biblical stories that you can add sounds. As a matter of fact, Pentecost. Um, if you're doing the Acts 2, 1 through 21 reading, encourage people at home. And of course, you know, this is, uh, sorry about the time, time lag, uh, maybe for next year. But anytime the reading says anything about fire, wind, or spirit, have tiny bells, the little temple bells, wind chimes, there's a set right behind me. Uh, any instruments that shake, um, you can create a, a, an instrument out of rice and um, toilet paper tubes. Hey, they're handy, right? Um, and so when you hear those words in the scripture reading, you make your instrument sound. Now, a rehearsal ahead of time to make sure that it doesn't last forever is not a bad idea. But at key words in scripture readings, as we're reading, um, making those sounds, making the sounds, fire, wind, and spirit, as we read those words, engages the congregation, certainly engages the children in making them listen for specific things. So we have talked about experiences now, all about um, kind of random ringing, um random sounds creative sounds but let's get into um handbells a little more some of us may be confronting ahead of time and andrew is going to put up a a um one of my handouts that you'll see beginning a choir there it is um this is how i have started children of all ages for a lot of years and those of you who have listened and heard Yes, I'm trying to write a book. Yes, this is going to be in it. And, you know, I just, even even in times of isolation, today's day 80 for me, um, there's just so much that's going on and so much that I'm enjoying doing that I haven't gotten to it yet. But this is a format for starting a group from the concept of the very, very basics of what they know to what they don't know. If you look at row A, it has circles, and I am identifying circles as left and square as right. 
So if you were in my classroom, you might hear me say something like, look at row A, what do you see? You see circles. What are the circles? Wait a minute, the counting is strange. It says one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. It doesn't count one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, you know, the kids or the adults say, no, it doesn't. Um, there are different counts all the way through there. It's groups or, or and there's your math lesson. It's, it's sets of counts. So would you in row A, pat your left hand when you see a circle. All right, here we go, ready? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four. Good job. Now, if you, as we're looking, I'm not gonna take you through the whole thing. Row C, you notice there are circles and squares. So it goes back and forth, a pat to the left. This is my left and a pat to the right. Um, and you do those exercises. These instantly, if you're in a, um, in a group formation, it translates very easily to martellato, a light martellato. And if you're ringing from home, if you're thinking about having bells, a couple pillows wrapped in a blanket make a pretty good handbell pad. Um, I've done that, had to do that an awful lot in hotels where hey, we forgot the handbell pads, we can make, make do with pillows and blankets. So if you look down through there, this basically takes a beginning handbell person, even a more advanced handbell person, in a sequential step-by-step, -step, experimenting with left and right, and going all the way through. Now, to, for those of you who go, oh, well, this is just too easy, would you tap with me row F, right hand, is square, left hand is circle, and we're gonna try that. Now, it's not fair for you to sit back and observe. I'm watching you. Don't sit back and observe, actually try this, either on your table in front of you or on your lap or wherever you are at this point. Row F, are we ready? One and two and ready and go. And one and two and three and four and two and two and three and four and three and two and three and four and four and two and three and four. A lot harder than it looks. And these are ways of getting your handbell groups at home to keep rhythmically active. Now, this is one of the steps, thanks for that, that um, handout up there. This is one of the steps that um, you can use. The next step is then to move from that and using pencil circles and squares in an actual score for your handbell beginning ringers, and then eventually having them use a handbell score to make um, a chart. Here's where those reproducible books come in handy and phenomenal. There are some books that are listed in my, down at the bottom of my handout that you'll see um, that are reproducible. You can use them, kids can practice, adults can practice marking in pencil, and I am a pencil marking person, not a color marking person. And eventually, it comes around to saying, oh, let's just not mark it. Let's see how much you can you can actually read it. So you do need to take that last step of making them actually read the score, but you can use a pencil marking uh, aid to get your beginning ringers, even at home, f to learning to read music and to be able to play handbells. It's a good idea at that point to go online and possibly look at pre-recorded music, a lot of the publishers, I know Jeffers has a lot of the scores that they're selling pre-recorded um, right online so that they can play along their part with the piece that they're actually listening to. So again, anything that's photo duplicatable, any of the reproducible books are an invaluable tool at this time because you can send music home if it gets destroyed you can still reproduce copies as many as you need for your group. Now, practicing at home, and we have um, all experienced this even before COVID, sending Charlotte Browns home with their music and saying practice at home. 
you will see online, and especially if you're members of any of the handbell groups on Facebook, a lot of people are using spoons, wooden spoons, uh, ladles, plastic bottles, even tuned water glasses for um, their experiences at home. So it is not impossible to practice bell music at home. Again, it's not a bad idea to practice along with the track and those tracks in the form of the recorded sample music of what you're doing are right there. Now, if you do, and I am very lucky at Charlotte Bruns, I was looking the other day and of the sets of bells that between myself and Charlotte Bruns owns, we have six sets of handbells that cover that three octave range in the center. We've got more than that, obviously, but as far as six sets of bells that could cover um, that, that range. Now, I'm sure you probably don't have six sets or even four sets or two sets at home or at your church, but even combining bells and chimes, you can send these instruments home with people. Now, back in my day years ago, when I was sending stuff home with kids, we had a system at school, and I'm gonna hold it up here, that we had a tub that looks like this. This is one that I still have around, and that's big enough to hold materials. So making an individual tub for each of your ringers, mixing bells and chimes so that they can practice at home is, is a great idea. Now those tubs, I'm, I don't know whether you can still get them or not, or I'm not sure that they're still available, but I did check online and we do have tubs like this. This is a plastic um, dish pan and they're available, I think I checked Dollar Tree, they're a dollar a piece. Um, I think um, Amazon has them um, 12 bucks for 10. But if you notice, right inside I can put a nice set of smaller bells. This is the smaller tub. They do have bigger ones. And inside that tub, it's pretty easy for me to just slide the music down. It keeps the music flat at the bottom. And you can send that tub. Okay, here's your practice tub for this week. Obviously, you're not going to be able to change a lot of assignments. They're going to have the same assignment. But there's a practice tub. It's uh, able to be disinfected. It's able to be washed, and the manufacturers of the bells are saying now that the handles can be wiped down with disinfectant wipes. So you can send that home. And again, looking for music that is reproducible uh, for few bell changes is an important uh, part of what you need to do. There is a list, nothing comprehensive, and as as far as what I'm presenting to you today, everything that I'm saying, I've already done. I've tried this, so this is something that I consider tried and true. But checking out the reproducible list of music that you can actually take home with you, uh, if it gets torn up, you know, you can make another copy. Uh, checking on Handbell World on Jeffers site, handbellworld.com, you can find these uh, reproducible books. Some of them may actually be available as online downloads so that you can actually print them at home. Um, I've seen some choirs recently that are experimenting getting back together, obviously scattering ringers around your worship space if you are starting to begin worship again, um, doing random ringing along with other parts of music um, in the service is a great idea. And I know that Costco has three to four foot folding tables. I saw a group recently that took each ringer, had their own table, their own music stand, their own set of bells, and they spread them across a larger area. Everybody had on masks, um, and that's one for me. Make sure you wear a mask for me. Um, but those those things have actually worked in limited areas. And as far as rehearsals go, pick music that's easy so that you don't have to have a lot of time rehearsing. 
and then let your people know that they do need to rehearse at home. One of the series that I pulled out almost right away and looking at and planning ahead for programs, concerts, things like that coming up is a set called Ring Along Series by Cantabile Press. They were done by Artis Freeman. It's been a long time, but they still are on Jeffers Handbell site. I checked them out. And there are seven different sets of books. Some of them are Christmas, old favorites, American music. None of them are music reading. Artis has taken the words that are in public domain to carols, to hymns, and she has done something really interesting. You get a set of books, one's labeled A, one's labeled B, one's labeled C, one's labeled D. So you have your individual note. And in the text, she has circled the word. So joy to the world would have joy. And then under two, you want the bell sound to stop. She's underlined. So circle the word where your bell rings. The underlined word is where your bell dance. Um, this is something that could be very exciting as we're getting back together to distribute bells among your congregation, give them this type of book that could actually be read from, and they can ring along, no singing, but they can ring along with your organist or your pianist um, to, in you know, to emphasize or to actually enable us to participate more in worship. Once again, they're great. I'm going to be using them coming up this fall. I know that you'll find some uh, useful things there. There are two Christmas series, and then there's a whole raft of other ones, old hymn favorites and things like that, that you actually are participating and ringing a bell um, when it's appropriate for that song. Um, Again, I've said a couple of times, <coughs> pardon me, online recordings, go online. Um, one of the things I suggested to a colleague the other day, he called me up and said, what am I going to do with my bell choir? And I said, well, go online and pick five possible new pieces that you're looking at and send them the links. You can copy the exact link to Jeffers and many times they have a score and a recording. And I've encouraged my ringers occasionally to say, I like this one, I don't like that one. When we get back from COVID or whatever, um, let's do this one as a ring uh, along at home. Another thing that that same colleague asked me about um, was how to, how to engage his ringers in music that they already know. And one of the ideas, and I've actually been a part of this and will be a part of it is to check with your composers many of them are being just like me they're staying at home right near their computer as i am with you today and so you could say hey let's all get together on a zoom meeting or a house party meeting or one of the new facebook groups and let's meet a composer um, many, even the choral and um, the other composers that, that we use in our churches are very willing to take a few minutes um, with you to say, you know, here's what I was thinking. Do you have questions about the composer? And it sort of brings the music to a reality all the way through there. So uh, a chat with any of the composers around, I know many of them are are uh, open and available. If you don't want to use Zoom, uh, House Party is one that I've found recently. I haven't tried the new Facebook group, but I think it would probably work. Google Groups as well. Uh, now, into little more energy into the handbell ensembles. Um, many of my friends around the country are using smaller ensembles. I am among the composers that are writing some new music for eight bells, 12 bells. Um, and there are organizations and groups. There's one called Synology Music, which is a part of STEP. They have simple things. And I know I have three of my pieces in there that are carols. They were originally envisioned for two people to ring. This is years ago, maybe 25 years ago, I wrote them. 
um, where you ring four in hand and the two people share about an octave uh, of bells and then they may have a bell here or there to pick up. Um, those can be expanded to four people, six people, um, a single music stand, no key changes, you just have the two bells and you're spread out comfortably. One of the best resources that I've found recently, and this is from Augsburg Fortress. We've used this, friends of mine have used it. It's gonna show up, it may show up backwards, but it's in the list. Four by four, hems for piano and four ringers. And you have reproducible scores in there for just the handbell part and just the piano part. So for example, here's one, it's just the handbell score. And it's very basic, four ringers, eight bells. And then the piano part is in a different area. And you have the same sort of thing for the pianist. I know you're reading these backwards, but, and Anne has just come out with a second book. She has four Christmas pieces. Again, four ringers, eight bells and piano. I think that's gonna be cool. Um, and in that line, there are, and I've got a couple here, two octave handbell pieces. Excuse me, I've got my, all my props are all around me here. Um, but I pulled one out, I was looking through files and I found something called Ring Merrily by Barbara Kenyon. That's a name that those of us who have been around a while might know. And it's a good possibility if your handbell choir has been around for a while, that they would have this very piece or pieces like that. Now, what caught my eye on this one, and I'll do my best to hold it up. If you notice, they are dotted half rhythms. Mostly, we're going up into half notes and quarter notes. So something very basic, very simple, that is, can, it can be very beautiful and can be practiced at home or put together very quickly if you need to put something. Of course, I've got to talk about mine. Piper's Lullaby is one that's just like that. It has very, very simple chordal pieces. And you play along with the chords. Um, there's a recorder part for it. Many pieces also, if you wanted to play uh, handbell pieces, you could do just the treble clef or have a keyboard play the bass clef. So you're playing the treble with your bell ringers. The bass clef is played by the piano. Um, so those are ideas. I encourage you to look in your files for two octave music. Now, PL Grove, Pam Grove has been very kind at on my handout. And in addition to that, she has allowed us to use, and please just for your own use, um, a list of two octave music that she had compiled. And she actually identified some specific ones that would be beneficial for us um, to do as small ensembles. So again, two people, uh, one person solo with mallets to a handbell tree. If you're not sure of what a handbell tree is, you can check with me, but basically this is a, a handbell tree of sorts that I've put together. Um, one ringer with mallets, two ringers, three ringers, four ringers, going very minimalistic, looking at things that uh, add other instruments um, and, and all of that sort of thing. So that's sort of my presentation, that's my outline. My idea was to plant seeds. I'm hoping to give you some seeds that have been planted. I would like for you to expand on them and let me know what you've done because it could be really exciting to exchange ideas and thoughts. If you have questions, that question and answer period is coming here in just a few moments. Um, I would like to take an opportunity to say, Presbyterian Association of Musicians has been near and dear to my heart. My childhood um, was actually influenced by my choir director who went to some of the earliest music and worship conferences 
at Montreat. So I grew up in my little Presbyterian church in Spring Hill, West Virginia, Rock Lake Presbyterian, hearing about Montreat. And I attended when I first got into music and worship and working in churches. Um, and they are celebrating this year an anniversary. And we are celebrating virtually. They're actually going to have a virtual conference. I encourage you. I'm going to be there. I encourage you to be a part of that. I really want to thank uh, Mary Beth Hutchinson Jones and Andrew Perkins for making this possible, as well as everybody at PAM. And I am going to be open for your questions. If you have questions for me now, there's also an email uh, to ask permission to use the materials that you've seen. Uh, you're welcome to email me, and I'll try to get back to you as, as much as possible. So I'm going to toss it back to Andrew now for questions and answers and see what we've got. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tim. And as a reminder, everyone, you can uh, type in your question in the question field in your browser window. Or you can also click on raise your hand to speak directly to Tim. So uh, the first question that I have in the in the question box is, is one that, that uh, it, it relates to something you said earlier. Is there a reason why you don't like color coded marking? Yes, and I can actually I can. Uh, there are a lot of people that do it. I was an elementary teacher. I think I had one of the first sets of uh, choir chimes, Walmart chimes way back, I'm not going to tell you how many years, um, and we were going to different festivals, and I was conducting one year, and there was a child who I noticed standing down there, as very attentive, but not playing any notes. Um, and he said to me at that point, I don't have notes. And I said, oh, yes, you do, here and here. And he said, no, I'm pink, that's yellow. So that indicated to me that he was reading colors, but he wasn't actually reading the notes in the score. The idea of circling and squaring in pencil, and I do emphasize pencil, is that you're actually identifying the notes, but you can erase those pretty directly and encourage them just to read the notes. It's a step-by-step. -step. The color system sort of you're always going to have to do colors if you if you do that because they're looking at colors and the child kind of put put it there. I don't, you know, the teacher ran out of whatever color he was using and used another color and he said, that's not my color, I don't ring there. So that's the quick answer. They read color but not note. Okay, and now we're going to go to Linda Rutherford. Linda, I'm going to unmute you Linda. and you can speak to Tim. Hi, Tim. Hey, Linda. How are you? I'm Hang good. In there. I'm in. I know. Um, you mentioned the four by four um, piano plus four ringers. Yes. Could you hold that up again, please? Sure, could. It's in the notes. Oh, okay. It's, okay. It's referred to everything that I said is referred to, but I don't mind to hold it up again. These are from our friends at Augsburg Fortress. Um, okay. I've used them. They're good. They're good. Um, and as I say, she has a second set, four by four, for Christmas. And down at the bottom, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom of the notes, with my footnotes, um, they're referenced there. And there's a website for Augsburg Fortress. And Jane would be happy to help you at Augsburg Fortress. OK. And you mentioned the notes. Are they going to be sent to us separately? Are they here? Or I kind of came in late. If you click on handouts, if you have a control panel there, down at the bottom it says WAPAM Creativity dash Corona PDF PDF. If you click on that, they're all there. If you can't get to them, then you okay. can email me and okay. I will be glad to send them to you as well. Okay. I'll search for them after we get after you get done. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much. Sure, thank you. Good to hear from you. Yeah, see you later. Okay, and now we're going to go to, uh, oh, we have several questions that came in in the question box, but uh, as I sift through those, we're going to go to Mary Lou Fast, who has her okay, hand raised. Mary. 
Well, it looks like we're having some trouble with her audio. So Mary Lou, if you wouldn't mind, if you would type your question, uh, I'll be happy to deliver it to Tim. And let's see. Uh, I have several have several positive comments about the the Four Ringer book uh, in praise of that. Uh, someone someone asks, are you familiar with Linda Corta's Twelve Bell series? Some great diatonic arrangements. I know about it, but again, what I've tried to do is to uh, let you know the things that I've actually experienced. I've not experienced that that set, so I'm not familiar with it. But if you go on any of the, Facebook has a ton of handbell groups, uh, Handbell L on Facebook, Handbell People, um, composers, and as a matter of fact, I'm writing some stuff even now, composers and musicians are putting up ideas and new things there. So if you're on that, there's hardly a day goes by that somebody doesn't suggest something. And it's also open for your questions. You can say, hey, I need this, and somebody's gonna have the answer for you pretty quickly. Very good. We have a question that says, how are you planning for Christmas? We can't count on the usual string pros, uh, full choir and bells, uh, and this is from uh, Biff in Nashville. Well, I am not actively involved in uh, planning church music currently. I am doing what I love, which is I am playing the organ and playing the piano and have no other responsibilities. So the actual planning of Christmas on the church level, um, I am not experiencing directly. I would like to. I'm looking for, for that opportunity for that new job. Um, but at the same point, I know that a lot of people are looking at, at the, the problems and the difficulties. I would definitely look back at random ringing along with hymns. Um, depending on what your congregation decides, there's an awful lot of chat and talk in the choral world about singing in public. Um, my thought is to get instruments out and let people, percussion instruments, handbell instruments, random ringing, things like that to get them participating if you're not singing. Um, small groups, the duets, trios, quartets, even a solo handbell ringer or a solo handbell ringer with mallets um, would be the ways to go. And it totally depends, first of all, upon your state and what they're allowing and upon your denomination or your local church as to what they are thinking about um, doing. I am the one that errs on the side of caution. So I would look at things using small groups, um, potentially using family groups, uh, people that live together um, can also get together and make music and rehearsing those little ensembles um, and putting together, we could call it a family Christmas. Um, that way you're involving people either virtually or in person, but you're minimalizing the risk. So my best answer at this point. Okay, uh, we have a question from Emily Klim. She says, I like the idea of the congregation participating. When you were talking about Peace Like a River and the African rhythms, you said something about passing out pentatonic bells. Could you yes. elaborate more on that? Absolutely. Um, there are a lot of Amazing Grace is a pentatonic hymn. It's based around five notes. If you go to your piano and play the five black notes, um, then you'll get a pentatonic scale. If you do the same thing with bells, you'll also get a pentatonic scale. So looking at hymns, and again, I'm, you know, it's the, let me Google that for you. Uh, Google is a great friend. And I go to Google and say, give me a list of pentatonic hymns and there are four or five sources that do that some hymnals actually also list their pentatonic hymns and i believe there's a site hymnary.org that i use a lot that uh, will show those hymns you can even not do pentatonic and for example joy to the world i very often will just hand out bells to the choir in procession, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, 
and tell them, ring anytime, go for it. And as we are playing and back when we were singing, singing and playing, say, play anytime and be a part of it. So this is a way I think that we can get people to begin to be engaged in worship and music, but avoiding the singing. So if you have more questions or want to discuss it, find me, drop me an email and uh, we can chat. Okay, and it looks like oh we have we have one person uh, we have Kath Wissinger oh no we don't <laughs> hi nope, Kath hi Kath they they changed their mind I suppose uh, okay well I think that's all of the questions we have for now uh, we, we also have several several thank yous to you oh uh, someone does want to know uh, for practical purposes what what is the email address they can reach you at. Okay, that email address is in your handout, and I believe it's, let me see, I set up an email address for this webinar so that I could be sure to, to get, uh, get things from people so that it wouldn't get caught in all of the other things. So let me see if I can find that best email address up. I'm almost there. It is wa music, W A U G H, my last name, and the word music at 123mail.org. Once again, wa music at 123mail.org, and it's in your handout. Okay. Oh, and we got one more question that came in. Um, are there any good ideas for organizing a safe in-person practice? I have inexperienced ringers that cannot practice by themselves and get a reliable result. The 12 bell music works great for my small six person choir. Well, we are still in that exploration and I think everybody in the handbell world is sort of exploring that perfect or less than perfect rehearsal situation. Um, the, the best thing that I could say at that point would be potentially to gather your people together in a very large space, preferably outside, um, pick very easy music that is easily accomplishable and then, uh, rehearse it minimally, send them home with the music, send them home with a sound file off of Jeffers and take a listen and have them ring along. It's going to be tough. I mean, we're we're all learning to reinvent the wheel at that point. And there are lots of things that are unproven. I've uh, seen restaurants that are installing shower curtains in between the tables to try to create a buffer between people. And we just don't know. I mean, we're still in that, that area of how much and how little can we do. I think handbells may be a little earlier than singing choirs generally because we're not actually um, making a sound from our mouth or actually spreading anything. Um, and if careful washing of hands, masks, I'm a big believer in masks because I'm a kidney transplant person, um, and safe, safe precautions um, may help, but we still may be too early to, to do the big group things. Um, I know for myself, and for Charlotte Bronze, we're exploring things that will allow us to get together in small groups. Um, the maximum being low bells, battery bells in the middle, and treble bell rehearsals that are actually done at three different times so that you're putting things together. But again, that's for more experienced ringers. And it it's going to be tough for a while to get those beginners and those early ringers going. Okay, and uh, we have uh, Lita Cook, who has her hand raised. Lita, if you will, if you will go ahead, you are unmuted. Uh, let me see. I want to know uh, what kind of preparation you gave when you sent handbells home with people. I've never sent handbells home. Uh, go what ahead. Preparations? Generally, I wouldn't. I would be careful sending them home with beginning or younger ringers, unless you had a really good session about taking care of them. 
but sending handbells home with with a little more experienced stringers, um, I don't, you know, in in our situation currently, I don't see that that uh, that's going to be a problem. Um, we're at Charlotte Bronze. We're looking at figuring out repertoire that we can assign one person one spot, put all the bells together in a, a wash bin, the music right in there with it, and sending it home. Uh, and letting them practice at home, potentially with a um, a recording off of Jeffers or other locations, and just asking them to be careful. Part of the idea of the bin or some enclosure is that it does give some safety. Um, other things that I've used to carry bells or send bells home outside of cases uh, are, especially for, for the smaller bells, some grocery stores, I know I got mine at Kroger's, um, have carriers for wine bottles and putting a sock or a glove uh, over the bell and then putting that bell down into that little carry-on bag um, yeah. seems to protect them very well. We've traveled with bells that way. I've actually flown with handbells that way and have had very good results of not having anything damaged. But obviously, you're going to take a risk. Um, but with more experienced stringers, I think they'll treat them well. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a couple more hands up. We're going to Shirley Derryberry. Shirley, hey, Shirley. Uh, go ahead. Hi. Well, my question is about the, the Ring Along Press and those Ring Along series. Is that the yeah. same as the Sing Along series? It is not. These are actually older. I, they have been around an awful long time. Um, they are sing along. Those are old. Yeah, I'm afraid they are. <laughs> these are, <laughs> these are, these have been around a while. We will not tell you how many years I've been doing bells, but well, I, I know how long I've been doing. It's been, <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you and I, you and I have similar histories. Yeah, I think this is year 52 for me or something, but who's counting? Um, but. <laughs> You, they they may be in your in your files or back in the back, but they're little books. The Christmas ones are red, and each book has an individual note on it. Right. Again, oh, an individual. Yes, they do. The sing-alongs yeah. do too. Oh, okay. These these were published as her ring-along series, and uh, the reference is in your handout, so you can find them there. Okay. Jeffers. Yeah. I did a quick search on Jeffers and found. I think I said seven different series that she's oh, got. Oh, good. Okay. So. The, the, I'm just wishing I hadn't given all away my level two and earlier things that to other groups that were starting up. Now I'm wishing I had it all. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of that's one of the things. I'm a pack rat, so I keep too much. So I've still got a lot of that stuff. <laughs> oh well, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. <laughs> All right, and now we'll go to Carol Lynn Mazel. Carol, go ahead. If you'll unmute yourself, you can speak to Tim. Carol Lynn, yay! How are you? It's three o'clock. Oh, so Carol, so Carol, you'll need to click the little microphone button and and make it turn green so you can uh, so Tim can hear you. Are we good? There you are. Okay. There you are. Uh, hey. On shared bells. Uh, you, if you have six sets of bells, you can send home those bells that are shared from one ringer right. to another. But if someone else, uh, shared bells, I know will be an issue. We do have some wonderful music that that uh, has no shared bells right. or maybe has no bell changes whatsoever right. uh, that would be good to use. Even some more advanced music for this. But right. uh you know what what are you doing with charlotte bronze or do you send the f sharp well, home with one person and the g sharp home with another and and the a flat uh with the next guy good question what i'd suggest now we're lucky because we've got you know we have six f sharps so we can at least get them out with everybody but most choirs these days or a lot of choirs have bells and chimes and what I do is choose, you know, you're going to get your two main bells, then you're going to get chimes as your sharp or your flat, your shared bell. 
uh, and another person is going to get the actual bell. So you're breaking up your bell and your chime sets, but the shared bell becomes a shared chime at that point. So that you, if you have a set of bells and a set of chimes, you've got, um, you know, if we're doing uh, C5, uh, B4, C5, the B flat goes home with the B4, C5 ringer and the A sharp becomes a chime for the, the other person. Um, so mixing your bells and your chimes for practice purposes, it's mainly, it's sort of like the, the spoons and the other things that you can uh, grab something kinesthetically and get that idea of uh, ringing and, and moving everything in that direction. So, so there's so, just a lot of hand washing that goes on and trust among the people that share bells in performance. Well, in performance, I would even go with bells and chimes. I mean, at this point, we are not in what we could call ideal circumstances. So, you know, I don't have any problem getting people ringing. If you're going to have a, a chime and it's going to be a chime instead of a bell, I can tolerate that, especially until <laughs> we get out of the, the time that we're, that we're living in now. Thank you. Sure. All right. And Catherine Griggs. Catherine, if you'll unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, Tim. Um, Hi. My question is, and you referred to a list that Pam had put together of two octave music. I didn't see that in your handout. Is that something we email you about? At the bottom of my handout, the very last thing you will see, she doesn't have, she didn't put too many um, pieces in there, maybe six or seven that she suggested. Oh, okay. tumble. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, okay. um, and I'm looking now just to double check. Yep, it's there right on page seven. Okay. Which is the bottom of the page. She, she gave us six or seven pieces out of, her two octave lists that, that work well for ensemble. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, and now we'll go, uh, we, uh, next is Janice Wasinski. Janice. Hi, Janice. Go ahead. Okay, uh, yes. When it comes to sending home a recording, is it allowable to burn it onto a CD for someone who does not have a computer? You would need to check with the uh, publishers at this point to see what their, okay. their regulations are. I have been noticing, I haven't had to do that. And in general, I can say, you know, hey, here's a website, find it on your phone, find it on your uh, computer. Uh, but they have been very generous, um, mostly all the way across the board. The bottom line on copyright and permissions are ask. Uh, um, write the publisher, find out who's in charge of that. Tell them exactly what you're gonna do. I wanna burn a CD of your sample recording. Um, I know several that I've seen on Handbell L or some of the other, other spots have sort of given blanket permission. You can use our recordings uh, as you need them, even for worship. So it's just a point of asking individually um, okay. the publisher going to them. And they're very, the handbell publishers are very cooperative. They're very helpful. So I don't think you'll have any trouble with that. Thank you. Sure. All right. And Leah Wilson. Oh, Leah. Leah hi. Leah. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> all right. Well, there's, I think email. That's, uh, there's always email. I think that's all of the questions we have for now. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Absolutely. So I think this is where we'll wrap it up. And I will tell you that uh, we appreciate uh, you, Tim, for, uh, for your presentation today. And I'd like for all of you to know that we appreciate you being here today and that this town hall was brought to you 
by Jeffers Handbell Supply and the Presbyterian Association of Musicians. As a reminder, registration is open for our online worship and music conference this summer. Learn more and register at presbymusic.org slash 2020 conference. We have daily choral and handbell masterclasses, evening worship services, concerts, a hymn festival, so much more. And we're very pleased to be able to bring this to you in a digital format, especially with so many events being canceled this summer. So thank you once again, and we'll see you at the next town hall.